All right, Shalom, Yasha Allah, peace Israel. First and foremost, we would like to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shah, Bahashim, Akakadash, double honest to our apostles and elders of great millstone who rule well and has taught us this truth, and also peace and salutation to the whole full elect out here laboring in truth and in sincerity in the four corners of the earth under the standard and the banner of Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shah. All right, and this is a portion of the GMS Boston camp from the brother Korab with the brother by the wall. And through the spirit and power of Yahweh Shemasha, we're here once again to go into a quick lesson in Adonai Ratazah, which means Lord willing, this lesson is edifying. And as you see, I have on the screen the definition uh, play. All right. And, um, you know, you have Yahweh Shemasha at this very moment sending the plagues upon the earth, man. All right. And, and, and ultimately, the plagues is being sent on Babylon, which is also known as America, which is also known as spiritual Sodom in Egypt. All right, because this this place uh, is the hub of wickedness. All right, and the Lord is going to uh, destroy it from from off the face of the earth. Right, but before He does that, He's going to bring these plagues to show His dominance. All right, just like how He did in ancient Egypt. All right, and for those uh, naysayers, those scoffers, those that don't want to believe the scriptures and believe the uh, the report of the men of the Lord, first and foremost, time with our apostles and elders, they're going to look like a like fools out here because. Uh, the intended purpose of Yahweh Hashem Al Shah sending forth his men, his prophet, is to give warning uh, 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 of what's to come. All right, and not just only that, but as as time progresses and that we get closer to the return of our Lord Yahweh Shah, you know these plagues is going to take hold of the earth and they're going to be known uh, by way of the scriptures. All right, because these events already took place before, and and with these events taking place, that that uh, you have Esau. All right, his news reporters, uh, his scientists, and all these 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 people that's observing and, and seeing what's going on in the world, they're saying uh, these things are happening at a biblical proportion. All right, so hey, man, it's gonna turn everyone's direct uh, attention to, to 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 the scriptures and also the men of the Lord. All right, and this is why we tell our people, you so-called blacks and Spanish native Muslim Indians, to repent. All right, because you know how it's looking, we don't have that much time left, right? And um, real quick, this is the definition of a plague, right? And it says, so lock it, let me open it up a little bit. It says plague. When you go to the second bulletin, it says an unusual large number of insects or animals infest, infesting a place and causing damage. All right. Um, some of the similar words are infestation, epidemic, invasion, influx, and swarm. All right. And that's what the lesson is going to go into. All right. In the recent, in the recent days. Uh, that just passed, you know, you have uh, 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 an invasion or uh, influx of, of of these animals, so like not animals, but insects and also animals as well, you know, uh, 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 you know, swarming cities, all right? You had in Texas, that's what, uh, one of the bulletins and one of the videos is in Texas, you had uh, fishes uh, all died off on the, uh, on the beachfront in Texas, all right? You also have a swarm of locusts in, uh, uh, I believe it's in... Nevada, and also you have uh, swarms of bees in New York City, all right? But once again, those are signs that the plagues that are coming upon the earth. Another definition, a uh, bulletin point says, a thing causing trouble or irritation. Some of the similar words are bane, curse, scourge, affliction, all right, cancer, all right? And the last one, it says, oh, well, I got two more. It says, used as a curse or an expression of despair and disgust. All right, jumping down, it says, cause continual trouble or distress to afflict. All right, it says, bedevil, torture, torment, trouble. Um, and the last one says, pester or harass someone continually. All right, and even that, that's what's going to happen, right? These plagues is going to harass the people of the world, man. All right, and speaking of that, let's grab a quick precept, if you don't mind. All right, let me start it off with this one. Oh, got it, you got it. All right, this is uh, 2nd Ezra 8 and verse 15. It says, For many great misery shall be done to them that in the latter time shall dwell in the world because they have walked in great pride. All right, you see, it says many great miseries. All right, and how the Lord is going to bring those miseries by way of these plagues. The same way he brought uh, the, 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 the miseries upon the Egyptians in the time of old. All right, these people was harassed by these plagues. They was, they was, they was, uh, uh, um, how can I say, let's go back to that definition. Right, it says they was uh bothered. All right, it says tormented, persecuted by these plagues. Mm -hmm. All right, let's get um, let's get the definition for misery. It says a state or feeling of great distress or discomfort of mind or body, unhappiness, distress, hardship, suffering, affliction. 
And the next one says, a cause or source of great distress or discomfort, affliction, misfortune, difficulty, problem, adversity, ordeal, so on and so forth. All right. So, hey, man, this is this is how uh, how about you guys know, getting down? All right. Um, you got a precept, Rob? Yeah, I got one real quick. Um, uh, uh, Proverbs twenty-seven, um, uh, verse uh, verse twelve. Um, uh, Proverbs twenty-seven, verse twelve. Oh, prudent men foresee the evil and hide it from self, but the simple pass on and are punished. All right, you got it, brother. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Because like, uh, this month is so-called Pride Month, right? And these people are so uh, high mighty, you know. They, they, these people, they don't, they don't think nothing can happen to them. They have done, they have committed all kind of wickedness, mm -hmm. and they take it in good case. But guess what? That's the Lord Yahweh Bashim uh, set them up, man. They have no idea what's coming, you know. But the wise men, the prudent men, the one that's take, having care for the future, they, 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 they reflect on these things. They know these things. They, 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 they think about those what's about to come, and uh, and how you, how do you hide yourself? You had yourself in the scriptures, man, uh, uh, right. under the shadow of Yahweh Hashim Mashai. He said, but, but the simple pass on in our punish. So the vast majority of the people, man, the vast majority of the people, they have no care and they don't even consider it, man. They don't give a damn uh, about what's to come because, like, uh, in their mind, they think that uh, America will never go down. They think they shall never be in adversity, as the scripture says, you know? That's right. That's right. And, um, Real quick, I want to bring out uh, Luke 12 and 49, and then I'm going to grab Second Ezra just to link it to it, right? This uh -huh. is Luke 12 and verse 49. It says, I am come to send fire on the earth, and what will I if it be already kindled? So now I'm going to grab that in the NLT. Mm. All right. And this is Yahweh Shah speaking, right? It uh -huh. says, I have come to set the world on fire, and I wish it were already burning. All right. And in fact, it is already indeed burning. All right. The Lord right now is allowing calamities to take hold of the earth, all right? That is also known as fire as well. These plagues being sent on the earth is also known as a form of fire, all mm -hmm. right? And that's what's taking place uh, by way of Yahweh Hashem al all right? To the point where these people can't even function. So when the Lord Yahweh Shai comes, he's going to ultimately destroy this place, all right? And he's going to set this world in order. But before he does it, he has to send these plagues. He has to do damage and destruction to it. All right. Once again, to make his his name and his father's name, Yahweh, the heavenly father's name uh, known throughout the earth. All right. Mm -hmm. Second Ezra 16 and verse one, it says, will be unto thee, Babylon and Asia, will be unto thee, Egypt and Syria. Gird up yourselves with cloths of sack and hair and beware your children and be sorry for your destruction is at hand. A sword is sent upon you who may turn it back. A fire is sent among you and who may quench it. You see? A fire is sent among you. So uh, the, 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 the great plague that's going to uh, take hold of this place, America, is what? The ICBM missiles. But also you have the plagues that's going to uh, uh, cleave unto this place, right? Uh, um, verse 5 says, plagues are sent unto you. And what, what is he that may drive them away? So just like uh, <laughs> just like in ancient Egypt, when, when the Most High sent forth those plagues, you know, the people was crying out to Pharaoh to say, hey, man, let these people go. Yeah. If I may add with quick, bro, mm -hmm. what the Lord was doing in ancient Egypt is breaking down uh, Egypt economically. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Taking down the livestock, you know, the 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 uh, uh, the, the farming, you know what I'm saying? Yep. Uh, the firstborn, you know, because that's how, that's in the ancient world, that's how you became rich. You know, how many children you have, your land, your cattle, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that was the Lord taking down, taking them down economically. And the same thing the Lord Yahweh Hashim Mashiach right now is doing to America, you know, uh, uh, you know, inflation uh, 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 of, of food prices, you know, uh, to the roof, you know what I'm saying? Everything is, everything went up. And the Lord Yahweh Hashim is make is, uh, is making the people, the people uncomfortable, you know? Yeah, that's right. Like you said, uh, like it says, um, uh, they're being bothered. They're being uh, overtaken by way of these plagues. Uncomfortable. Harassed. Uncomfortable, yep. Yep. Harass, yep. Go yeah. on, that's it. Verse six, it says, uh, "May any man drive away, drive away, and hungry lion in the woods, or may anyone quench the fire, fire and stubble when it ha had begun to burn." And that's the key thing right there. It says, "May anyone quench the fire and stubble when it begin to burn." Right. So think about it. The Lord already uh, 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 started this thing, man. All right. Who can stop it? All right. Who can stop the destruction of Babylon? Who can stop Amer uh, America's economy from uh, from not failing? From not going down. All right. 
Who can stop these things? No one. Because guess what? Just like the scripture says, by uh, by Yahweh, by Shema, Sha, all things was made, and, by, and through him all things shall be ended. All right? So he's the one that has the, the, the say-so. Uh, the Heavenly Father, through uh, Yahweh, Shema, Sha, has the say-so on, on, on whether he wants his kingdom to continue or not. Or if he wants these plagues to stop or keep going. Right? It says, may one turn again the arrow that is shot of a, uh, of a strong archer. The mighty Lord sendeth the plagues, and who is he that can drive them away? It says, a fire shall go forth from his wrath, and who is he that may quench it, right? I'm going to jump down, right? This is verse 17. It says, woe is me, woe is me, who will deliver me in those days, right? And, and, and for Ezra to state this, right, it has to give you a, a visual. Like, you, you, um, you always mention uh, that precept is, is without vision, the people perish, right? Mm -hmm. Right, so it says, uh, "Woe was me, woe was me, who would deliver me in those days?" You gotta have a a, a, a foresight, right? To uh, you know, uh, put some imagery to it. All right, mm -hmm. for Visual, a man visu the, visualize what you're reading. That's right, for a man of the Lord to say, "Woe was me, woe was me, who would deliver me in those days?" Which is showing that these days is gonna be harsh, man, and it's gonna continue to say, "It's the beginning of sorrows and great mourning, the beginning of famines and great death, the beginning of wars and the power shall stand in fear, the beginning of evils. What shall I do when these evils shall come?" All right, what shall what shall we do uh, when these evils shall come? Which once again is painting a picture to show you that this place is gonna be completely upside down and it's gonna be tormented by the plagues that Yahweh Shemel is bringing upon it. All right, verse nineteen: Behold, famine and plague. Tribulation and anguish are sent as scourges for amendment. So when you go back to play, right, the definition, it says a thing causing trouble or irritation. It also yeah. goes into scourge, right? A scourge is also like a whip, right? To be beaten. If, right? I, if, if I may add, when you're trying to get somebody into submission, what do you do? You beat them down. Yeah. You, you know what I'm saying? It's, especially if they have a pride about them, you know? You, yep. you, you find every way possible to break the pride down, man, to break it low, man. That's and right. That's exactly what the Lord is going to do this to this place. That's right. It's a great point. That's a great point because that's what it says. Many, many great miseries should be done unto them that shall walk in great pride, right? It says, um, uh, it says, uh, behold, famine and plagues, tribulation and anguish are sent as scourges for amendment, and amendment goes into change, right? Mm -hmm. So, so he, 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 he's doing, he's sending it for 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 people to change their behavior, the, 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 the way of not, yep, the way of living, yep. Yep, it says, uh, verse 20, but for all these things, they shall not turn from their wickedness, nor be mindful of the scourges. All right, once again, because of that pride, right? It says, um, behold, victory shall be so good cheap upon earth that they should think themselves to be in good case. And even then, evil shall go upon the earth, sword, famine, and great confusion. All right. So, hey, man, that's 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 telling you straight up what's about to take place. You know, victory was so good cheap before, which goes into food. At a, at a point in time, people wasn't worried about the prices. Now the price is going up. Why? Because the lack of food, the distribution rate is not is not as flowing as it used to be. All right. Yeah. Uh, if I may, bro, so like if I may, right? Got it. Especially due to the war in Ukraine, because Russia and Ukraine are known are known as the the basket food of the world. Yeah. So well, ever since the war kicks in, you know, food prices have food prices has been increasing. You know. That's right. That's and, right. And, and, then, and, and then, as, oh, like, bro. No, no, I was gonna say, and then also with the crops as well, you have farmers uh throughout the four corners of the earth complaining about um lack of crops, man. Mm -hmm. All right. Even even so much, real quick, I want to pull this up real quick. Uh going into the same topic. Real quick, because I had just seen this. This was taken like a month ago. All right. Um, this is May 10th, 2023. All right. Because we mentioned about uh, farmers and lack of food. This is locust outbreak in Afghanistan threatens wheat harvest. You see, just like you had said, the most high is breaking down that, that society, right? He's breaking down uh, uh, the infrastructure. It says, uh, the UN's Food and Agriculture o Organization founded the alarm on Wednesday after locusts, locusts were spotted. Um, Salake, brother, I'm hearing the echo. Echo? Yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's, I think it's good now. It says, um, oh, it says, uh, I'm going to read it again. The UN's Food and Agriculture, Agriculture Organization founded the alarm on Wednesday after locusts was spotted in the country's north and northeast 
uh, said that a full outbreak this year could destroy up to 1.2 million, million metric tons of wheat or a quarter of the total annual harvest. Amen. And as you see, that's these farmers being affected by what? By the, the plague, a swarm of locusts, uh, just like in ancient Egypt. All right. And um, we can grab that. I have that right here as well. Let's go to it. Um, uh, uh, Exodus 10 and verse 1. It says, And, and the Lord Yahweh said unto Moses, Go into Pharaoh, for I have hardened his heart in the, in the hearts of his servants. That I might show thee, sh sh like, that I might show these my sign before him, right? Yeah, if if I may, I real quick, right? And we know modern day, modern day Pharaoh is Esau Edom, yep. so you have the prophets on the scene, letting these devils know, you know what's about to come. But the Lord's heart in the heart, they refuse to 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 listen to the prophets. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So so that's that's the Lord, uh, uh working uh, uh 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 working his miracle by uh hardening Esau's heart. Ultimately, to to bring them to bring him uh, bring him low, bring him down. You know? That's right, and that's the same thing because he said, "For he have hardened his heart and his heart the hearts of his servants." Right, mm -hmm. that I may mm -hmm. show these my signs before him, just like how these people like to say, "Seeing is believing." All right, or oh, they don't believe until actually these things start taking place right in front of their eyes. That's exactly what's happening. All right, just to back the brother point up as well. All right, and this is verse two, and that th and it says, and that thou mayest tell in the ears of thy sons and of the son of thy son's sons what things I have wrought in Egypt. All right, so this this is supposed this is going to be passed down for generation unto generation, which as as we speak right now during this lesson, we're referencing back to these same times, just like the scripture says that we was going to know these things from generation unto generation, and my signs which I have done among them, that ye may know that how, how that I am the Lord Yahweh. Right. So once again, this is this the Lord is doing these things to magnify his name and his reputation. All right. Bringing forth his glory to his name. Man. All right. It says, and Moses and Aaron came unto Pharaoh and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord Yahweh, power of the Hebrews, how long would thou refuse to humble thyself before me? Let my people go that they may serve me. Else if thou refuse to let my people go, behold, tomorrow will I bring the locusts into thy coast, and they shall cover the face of the earth. That one cannot be able to see the earth, and they shall eat the residue of that which is escaped, which remaineth unto you from the hail, and shall eat every tree which grow for you out of the field. And they shall fill thy house in, 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 in the houses of all thy servants, and the houses of all the Egyptians, which neither thy fathers nor thy father's fathers have seen since the day that we uh, that they were upon the earth unto this day. And he turned himself and went out. From Pharaoh, all right. Once again, that's 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 Moses and Aaron prophesying, right? <laughs> they telling of an event that's about to come that hasn't took place yet. You know, what yeah. I mean? even though it was the next day, he said, "I will, I will bring these things." He that prophesying. Yeah, that's uh, that's the uh, uh, Jeremiah twenty eight verse eight, man. Oh, that's uh, that's the Let's job. Of, that's the job description of the prophets, man. Let's grab it real quick since you said it. It's perfect. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Jeremiah twenty eight verse eight says, "The prophet has." Have been before me and before thee of old prophesied both against many countries and against great kingdoms of war and of evil and of pestilences. Yeah, and that's exactly what it is. Like uh, the prophets are in the lot, even in in our lifetime today, uh, declaring the the works of Yahweh and we always goes we always goes back to the the what happened in ancient time because uh, the Lord Yahweh and hasn't changed. He's the same. Yesterday, to then forever. So, uh, 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 you know, when, when when you're perfect, you don't have to be changed, and that's exactly what it is. The same method that the Lord used in the past to take down kingdoms is the same one that He's going to use in a lifetime to take down America. That's right. That's right. Verse seven it says, "And Pharaoh's servant said unto him, How long shall this man be a snare unto us? Let the men go that they may serve the Lord their God, the Lord Yahweh their power. Knowest thou not yet that Egypt is destroyed? All right." You see, to the point where these people, the Lord is bringing that harshness, that, 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 that you know, that the, the agony, the miseries upon them to the point they're like, yo, let them go. But the but Pharaoh didn't want to. And Moses and Aaron was brought again unto Pharaoh. And he said unto them, go and serve the Lord your power. But who are they that shall go? And Moses said, we will go with our young and with our old and with our sons and with our daughters and with our flocks and with our herds. We will go for we must hold a feast unto the Lord. 
All right, let's kind of jump down. Uh, I'm going to continue on Salaki. And he said unto them, let the Lord Yahweh be so with you as I will let you go. And your little ones look to it for evil is before you. Not so. Go now ye that uh, that are men and serve the Lord Yahweh for that ye did desire. And they were uh, they were driven out from Pharaoh's presence. And, and, and the Lord Yahweh said unto Moses, stretch out thy hand over the land of Egypt for the locusts. That they may come up upon the land of Egypt and eat every herb of the land, even all that is the hill had left. And Moses stretched forth his hand. So like Moses stretched forth his rod over the land of Egypt, and the Lord Yahweh brought an east wind upon the land all that all that day and that all that night. And when it was morning, the east wind brought the locusts. And the locusts went up over the land of Egypt and rested in the coast of Egypt. Very grievous were they. It says, before them there were no such locusts as they, neither after them shall be such. For they covered the face of the whole earth, so that the land was darkened. And they did eat every herb of the land and all the fruits of the trees which the hail had left, and remained not any green thing in the trees or in the herbs of the field through all the land of Egypt. All right? So there you go. All right? Yes. That's, that's, the, that's the plague of the locusts that Yahweh Shemashah is bringing uh, that brought he brought upon ancient Egypt, but just like the scripture says, uh, these plagues is gonna come upon Egypt again. Uh, as before, we, as it, before. It, so like that's a, that's a spirit, bro. I was just thinking about that because like um, uh, what happened to ancient Egypt was an example of mm -hmm. what's going to happen in our lifetime. You know what I'm saying? Yep. And, and, and on this lifetime, it's gonna be more extravagant. It's gonna yeah. it's gonna be more. It's gonna be great because we actually live in Babylon the Great. So the destruction gotta be match the wickedness. That this place has been producing ever since her existence. That's right. That's right. So I'm gonna run these. I'm gonna run these videos real quick, and then I'm gonna bring out that preset. Let me just get the audio going real quick. It says swarms of Mormon crickets invade Nevada. Let's get it real quick. Thanks for what? All right. And have, there, there you have it, right? And, you know, compared to what we just read, we know that it's only going to get much more worse than that. This is just the beginning, like the scripture says, the beginning of sorrows. All right. When you see those those those, those crickets, all right, uh, uh, roaming a city, uh, a state such as Nevada, you know, you have even people nowadays, they're so uncomfortable with locusts. They're not like the ancient time. These people are so used to them. The point where, you know, they ate locusts. But nowadays, people see a little a little cockroach or a little spider or something, they start losing their mind. How much more when it's invading a, a, a city? <laughs> you know, these people are going to be so uncomfortable, man. All right. But in the scripture says that when the locusts covered the land, it brought darkness, right? It was darkened. So how much more uh, when Yahweh Bashim Yashar really continue to unleash these plagues and increase them as we continue to move forward? All right. Let's go to the next one. Um, this one is uh, thousands of dead fish washing up on Texas shore, uh, which is another an another plague, right? It may not be the same plague that took place in ancient Egypt, but you can identify that. Like you said, brother. The Lord is going to bring things upon this, and this time, like never, like uh, stating back to the scripture, this is uh, a time like never before. All right, so these dead fish and uh, these these cattle's dropping dead, all right, such as the cattle that took place in ancient Egypt. But these fishes and these cattle that's dropping dead is going to be at an alarming rate. To the people, are going to be uh, heavily concerned. All right, so you got you got anything on, or you want me? Oh uh, yeah, yeah, I got, yeah, got some real quick, bro. Uh, Ephesians 
uh, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 14. Uh, Ephesians uh, 5, verse 14. And he says, uh, Wherefore he said, Awake, awake, thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and your house shall, shall give thee light. See, then that you walk circumspectly, and as false, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Mm -hmm. That's right. It says, uh, walk, uh, see then you walk circumspectly, circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, uh, as redeeming the time because the days are evil. So as we continue to move forward in this progression that happening in the earth towards the day of the Lord, just expect evil to increase as the scripture states. All right. It says redeeming the time. So in that time period of knowing that these things, because also, from those that are awake, such as the scripture says, awake thou that sleepest, for those that have uh, Yahweh Bashim El Shah have given light unto you to, to receive this knowledge, wisdom, understanding. This is time that we get ourselves together. We see in the signs take place in the earth. All right. This is a time in the moment where we get ourselves together and make sure that we continue to walk on that straight path, man. All right. And serve Yahweh Bashim El Shah in truth and sincerity. But also, we end use these indicators as uh, we know that the Lord's coming because we spoke of these things. But those outside, they don't understand. They're not even in, they're not even in the mindset of redeeming the time. All right, they're more so into 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 enjoying uh, the 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 the, uh, the things of this world, man. All right, which is a snare unto them. All right. Um, let me grab this next. If you got anything else, I'll, you, you got it, bro. You got it. You got it. Right, so I'm gonna go with this one. Uh, just give me one sec. Matter of fact, I got one. What you like, like, bro? Hey, brother. You hear me? Yep, I got, you got it, brother. Oh, uh, it's a uh, Revelation 16, verse 15. Revelation 16, verse 15. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garment, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. You know, yeah, that yeah. goes into the preparation, you know, uh, uh, being being ready. Because uh, in the hour that you take not, that's when your house are going to come. So we have to constantly... Uh, Working on ourselves, you know, improving ourselves, you know, to be the best, uh, to be the best version of ourselves, you know, uh, uh, so that we can be accepted in the sight of Yahweh Bashi That's right. That's right. Come on, man. Um, video real quick. This is Gulf Coast is dealing with a very different problem. The heat wave is taking a major toll on marine life. Hundreds of dead fish washed ashore in Brazor County near Houston this weekend. Zach Tortari reports from the coast. Seas of dead fish washing up along parts of the Texas coast, showing the incredible power of Mother Nature. Hypoxia is when we have lower than normal uh, dissolved oxygen in the water are, are very common in the summer. Katie St. Clair is the Sea Life Facility Manager at Texas A&M University at Galveston. St. Clair says the fish simply can't breathe. As we get these warmer Gulf uh, water temperatures, um, the, the water itself has less capacity to hold dissolved oxygen, which of course is really important um, and essential for the fish and other animals to breathe. While St. Clair says this can affect schools of fish more, other fish can also succumb to the event, as seen by social media posts like these, and plenty of curious passers-by who are breathing this all in. Pretty bad and stinky. Brazoria County says they can understand people's reactions. It's still alarming to see that, and, and just because it's a natural occurrence doesn't mean it's necessarily a pleasant one. The recent temperature spike, they say, has been a catalyst. That's kind of the, the perfect storm to combine that it can really produce pockets in the water where the dissolved oxygen. A lack of wave action has also contributed to the problem. The county has been coming through here with heavy equipment, raking the fish up near the shoreline and taking them over here to bury them in these sand dunes, which covers up the smell and the fish become compost, which serves as a healthy part of the ecosystem for the dune grass. And while this is something that isn't all that uncommon, it's happened before. I've seen it twice. It's hard to predict how long exactly it might last. It's crazy. But it's an issue the county says they will continue to deal with. We'll clean them up. Our parks department will get those up and, and get those beaches back to being clean so that people can get back and enjoy those those beaches. All My right. dad went EV. All right. And as you see, you know, with all those dead fishes, it's a lock in.
And it says with all those dead fishes, you know, you can get uh, some type of disease or, or, or some type of bacteria growing, you know, because of the uh, large amount of dead uh, uh, carcasses that's laid out. All right, that can that can mess uh mess up the uh you know the uh the, the environment. All right, mm. hey man, once again, like for instance, they speaking of oxygen within the water is low that these fishes are, are, are dying. Right, who has control over that? <laughs> that is pretty bro. I was I was about to say that too because like Esau says, oh that's natural. No, it's not natural. That's because of Esau's uh, wickedness. You know that these are uh, these are uh, the the. Uh, you know, the earth, the land, you know, is catching hell because of Esau, because the rulership of Esau Edom mm -hmm. is uh, unfit, you know, he's unfit to war, and that's exactly why the earth is in this condition that it's in right now, you know. That's right, that's right. So you have Esau, uh, 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 you know, what's that, Isaiah 20, 24? I got that, yep. I, I had to pull up already, <laughs> yeah, 24. Break it out? Yep, you got it. Isaiah 24, verse... Uh, Verse four. Verse, verse four. The earth mourneth and fadeth away. The world languish and fadeth away. The how the people of the earth do languish. The earth also is defiled under the inhabitants thereof, because they have transgressed thy, the laws, chained onions, broken the everlasting covenant. Therefore, had the curse devoured the earth, and they that dwell therein are desolate. Therefore, the inhabitants of the earth are burnt. In few men's left. That's right. And it says, and they that dwell therein are desolate. So that's speaking of man and beast, man. <laughs> that's yeah. not just specifying because we, we utilize the earth. This is supposed to be a, 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 our home, right? This is supposed to be a place that uh, we take care of and they take care of us. All right. But once again, under the inhabitants of Esau, Edom, the devil, all right, that's the, the Bible speaks of, you know, they uh, are, are, are just, they're destroying the, uh, the earth, man. All right, yes. let alone well, how about Shimon Shah is speeding up the process with it by applying by by by, by uh, allowing these things to happen, but also just like it says, the oxygen and the water. Well, how about Shimon Shah controls the elements? All right, so, hey man, the Lord's speeding things up, yeah. And if I may, too, and also Esau gonna be judged for that because the scripture says, destroy them, which is for the earth. So ultimately, the Lord Yahweh Shimon Shah is setting up these devils, man. You know, so that when he brings forth the judgment, it's gonna be justified. You know, that's right. That's right. Con. So we got one more. Um, let's get the last one. Just bear with me. So this is on the YouTube short. So it's gonna be very quick. It says a uh, massive swarm of bees took over a block in Manhattan. Yeah, man. Hey, listen. Uh, these are all signs, man. If you're paying attention to the climate of the world, you're paying attention to what's taking place. Yeah, how about Shemel Shah is about to make his move? All right. And once again, these are signs of the time. All right. And it's the time to uh, uh, for for you so-called blacks, Hispanics, Native, Central Indians, you Israelites to repent. All right. Because if not, and you don't want to take heed to the words of the prophets, the men of Yahweh about Shemel Shah. Guess what? You're gonna fall. All right. You're gonna fall under. All right, so I got one. I got one more precept. Do you have anything? Up? I got, I got second, 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 second. Oh, you yeah, Come on, come on. All right, let, let me grab this real quick. That's yes, that's beautiful, bro. We didn't even get the yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You touched that one, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's that? The scripture in Matthew which says, um, "Summer is nigh." Summer is uh, nigh. Uh, four. 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 All right. Tree. Yep. Uh, Matthew 24, and verse 32. And it reads, and it reads, uh, Now learn a parable of the fig tree. When his branch is yet tender and put it forth leaves, you know that summer is nigh. So likewise ye, when you shall see all these things, 
I know that it is near even at the door. All right. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. All right, you got it, brother. Uh, uh, second second Ezra 15, 15, verse, uh, uh, verse 5. five. Behold, Behold said the Lord, said the Lord, Lord I will bring plagues, plagues upon, upon the world, the, world, the sword, the sword famine, famine, death, death and destruction. And destruction. For, for wickedness, wickedness Yo, yo, I'm I'm echo, echo, bro. Oh, so lucky, brother. Bear with me real quick. It's all right. It's all right. Yeah. It's on my end. Uh, you got it, brother. Uh, verse 6. For wickedness had exceedingly polluted the whole earth in the hurtful words of affair. Therefore, say of the Lord, I will hold my tongue no more as touching the wickedness which the prophetic commit. Neither will I suffer them in those things in which the wickedly exercise themselves. Behold, innocent and righteous blood craft unto me, and the soul of the just complain continually. And therefore, saith the Lord, I will surely avenge them and receive unto me all the innocent blood from among them. Behold, my people is led as a flock to the slaughter. I will not suffer them now to dwell in the land of Egypt, but I will bring them with a mighty hand and will stretch out arm and smite Egypt with plagues as before. And will destroy all the land thereof. Egypt shall mourn, and the foundation of it shall be smitten with the plagues and punishment that the Most High shall bring upon it. That's right. Read the next verse. Uh, verse 13. They that till the ground shall mourn, for the, for the seed shall fail through the blasting in hell, and with fearful consolation. That's right. So, hey, man, as it's stated, that the Most High Yahweh Shema is going to stretch out his hand and smite Egypt with plagues as before and will destroy all the land thereof. All right? So, hey, man, it's happening. All right? It's in motion. All right? And that's one thing we all can see. If, you, if, you, if you're if you tuned in and you're, and you're on your watchtower and you're just keeping updated with what's being uh, put forth in the news and linking it to the scripture, you see that Yahweh Shema is doing exactly what he said he was going to do. All right? And with that, you know, we understand that it's going to create an a, 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 a environment. It's going to create a scenario. It's going to create a, a, a world where it's going to be um, it's going to be insane, man. It's going to be crazy. All right? It's going to create only, like a chain reaction, a chain well, reaction. That's right. That's yeah. right. And in the world where, where it's going to be, uh, 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 like you said, evil is multiplying and all these things happen and the Lord destroying this place, all right? You, you're you going to have to rely upon that faith that you, you know what I mean? Uh, the faith of Yahweh Bashim al believing in the Lord, all right? And, and and that he may have mercy upon you in your household, man, all right? It's necessary to, to, to believe more as these times get closer and closer to his return, all right? Because once again, if you look at this, uh, the scenario, the scripture says that uh, uh, when the Lord returns, shall he find faith in the earth, all right? That should let you know that how bad this place is going to be. To the point that people are gonna be uh, 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 losing it. All right. Calm, calm, calm. So I mean, if you ain't got nothing else, all right, we can. Now you got it, bro. I got nothing else. Calm, calm, brother. So why do y'all about Shemel Shah for bringing us together to do this lesson? Calm, and, calm, uh, we're calm. Gonna give, we're gonna give all praise and glory to Yahweh. Yahweh about Shemel Shah. Yahweh about Shemel that will honor our apostles and elders of great millstone who will want to start us this truth and also peace and salutation to the hopeful elect out here living truth and sincerity in four corners of the earth, understanding and the benefit of Yahweh Bashim Al Shah. And with that, we want to say Shalom. Shalom. Baba Ball. 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 Baba